Huffy Combs is not going to be a suspect ever until he's a defendant. You just wait. It's time will tell. And it's certainly been 28 years. So another six months or a year doesn't matter. The more pressure that he is under, the more he is going to start wilting and freaking out if he does what I predict he's going to do. And we'll see. Karen Stark joining me, a renowned psychologist at KarenStark.com. Karen, we earlier heard uh, investigative reporter Lauren Conlon trying to make some feeble attempt to explain why the nephew, um, Orlando Anderson, who's Keefe D. Davis's younger nephew, why he was beaten up so viciously at the MGM Grand following the Tyson fight. Uh, that Reportedly, Orlando Orlando Anderson had stolen a gold, I don't mean golden, I mean gold medallion, some rap medallion. So he was being attacked. Why does that matter? Under the law, revenge is not a defense to murder. And let's let's look at his, if you look at Sean Puffy Cohn's background, right, this is a nefarious, narcissistic guy who got away with abusing women, doing all kinds of things. It doesn't really matter, Nancy, although I could see they find excuses, but they are looking to destroy each other. They're competitive, and it's not a professional organization where they just do their best to do a good job. They are angry. This is how they are going about their lives. And I wouldn't be surprised if he ordered this hit. They've been saying that for years. Let's just hope that they actually get him and find something that brings him to justice. Okay, so guys, earlier you were hearing how in the middle of this bond hearing, a bail hearing, um, Dwayne Davis's bail, he interrupts the judge okay to stop this from coming out listen clark county prosecutors opposition to Dwayne davis's bail mentioned sean combs nearly 80 times they argue davis should not get bail because he admits he orchestrated shakur's murder on the promise of payment from combs during a hearing davis cuts off judge carly kearney to argue his claims about diddy made during a 2008 proffer agreement should not be allowed into evidence now Mr. Uh, Fred Hayden had them pockets at his house for 15 years in his attic doing all kind of TV interviews. He broke a, a, a proffer agreement. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Dwayne Davis jumps up and starts interrupting the judge. Okay, to you, Lauren Collin, what happened there? That was interesting, Nancy. He was clearly very upset and very nervous at what was about to happen. Not only that, Nancy, Cash Jones, who was an entertainment rapper, had already said, I'm going to put up 15% of your bail, Dwayne Davis. And allegedly, this was because he wanted, once Dwayne got out, he wanted him to be part of this television series, this documentary. And the judge also was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. No way. You're not doing either. So KPD, he realizes at this point, he is in a world of garbage. Law enforcement says Diddy is not and never has been a suspect in the killing of Tupac. Yeah, that's what they're saying. But in a 179-page filing, it's revealed that Dwayne Davis confessed to Tupac's murder and implicated Sean Puffy Combs. So, are they going to rely on their own documents or not? Listen. Prosecutors 179 page filing reveals that Dwayne Davis confessed to Tupac's murder 10 years prior to his public statements. 2008, Davis is charged for his participation in an LAPCP ring facing 25 years in prison. The LAPD offers him a proffer agreement regarding the 1996 drive by shooting of Shakur. Davis details the planning, attack, and aftermath of the shooting down to a confirmation call from Puffy, who allegedly asked, Was that us? Okay, did you hear that? Uh, to Shannon Henry joining us, uh, President Founder, SASS Surviving Assault, Standing Strong, reportedly 
after the hit, after Tupac's been shot, it took him six days to die. This happened in 1996. Um, according to Davis, there was a confirmation call, a phone call from Sean Puffy Combs after he hears Tupac's been hit. And he says, quote, was that us? Like somebody else has a hit? That's right. That's right. And, I, you know, this is all in line with how he behaves, making sure that he's everything's being followed through with, making sure that the directives he gives are followed. My fear is, is that it's not what you know, but what you can prove. And my hope is that this ties him directly to what has happened to Tupac. Now, my other fear is with all of this coming out, that people are going to forget the history of Diddy and what he's done and that this distracts us from the decades of violence and abuse. And I just pray that this is corroborating evidence and that our victims will finally see justice, all of them. You know, another thing, and you don't normally have this to Robert Crispin and Daryl Cohen, I think you agree with me, you don't normally get evidence on tape. But guess what? We've got it. Listen. We can wipe the ass out quick, you know? It's nothing. Who brought up the amount of $1 million? <laughs> he did. Puffy did it. So, Lauren Collins joining me, investigative reporter, we are actually hearing, and this is all the way from 2008. Mm-hmm. 2008. You hear Davis stating that Combs ordered the hit. Explain what we're hearing. Correct. In 2008, he gave this interview stating, or TPD gave this interview stating that they were hanging out in California, a group of people, they were in a room, and Puffy said, he went by Puffy at the time, I would give anything for Shug's head. He said Shug, perhaps that Tupac as well, but... We all know what happened after that. Now, Keefe D also claimed that he never got the money, Nancy. He never got this million dollars. Eric Zip Martin got this money. This is very interesting as well. Go ahead. Put put her up. Put her up. Do I care if a hitman didn't get paid? Uh, No. Let's hear the interview again, please. He said he didn't give us anything for them dudes He said it in front of all the people. I couldn't believe it. A whole home full of crimps. We'll wipe the ass out quick. You know, it's nothing. Who brought up the amount of $1 million? <laughs> he did. Puffy did it. Okay, let me state. It's kind, of, it's kind of grainy. He says, quote, he said he'd give us anything for them dudes' head. He said it in front of all them people. I couldn't believe it. A whole room full of crips. We'll wipe their ass out quick, you know. It's nothing. Question. Who brought up the amount of $1 million? Davis. He did. Detective. Puffy did, Davis. Yeah. Okay. Listen to the rest. There you go. Made the U turn, pulled up on the side, checked every car to see where they was. Biggie ever involved in any of these conversations about hitting no. Tupac? It was always just the Puff and Zip. Yeah. This is all Puffy's doing. Yeah. Okay, so Lauren Conlon, what are we hearing there? We are hearing that KPD implicates Puffy and says this is all Puffy's doing. And listen, I believe it. Do they really want us to think that KPD masterminded this entire thing? I mean, do you hear him speak? I, for one, completely believe that Puffy masterminded this, even though he's not a suspect. But, yeah, this this goes back, and this could be a big conspiracy to commit murder charge. Sean Diddy Combs' legal team has been notified that he is the subject of a federal investigation. The notification implies that Combs is, quote, within the scope of an investigation, but not a, quote, target. That designation can be upgraded or downgraded as the investigation continues. A grand jury is reportedly hearing evidence tied to the investigation, but there is no indication that any charges are pending. Similar to what Shannon Henry from SAS and Karen Stark, renowned psychologists, have stated, violence seemingly spills over into other areas of Sean Puffy Combs' life. Listen. 
Vibe Magazine Editor-in-Chief Danielle Smith has Combs pose in angel wings to go with the tagline The Good, The Bad, and The Puffy for the cover of the December 97, January 98 double issue. A few days before the release, Combs insists on approving the cover. Vibe denies his request, and Smith later receives a phone call from Combs threatening to see her, quote, dead in the trunk of a car. Her co-workers rush to hide Smith, afraid of what Diddy and his posse might do. So let me understand this. Um, Sean Puffy Combs, according to this female magazine editor-in-chief at Vibe magazine, Danielle Smith, she sets up a cover sheet for him. He wants to approve it. She says, no, we don't do that. And he threatens that he will see her dead in the trunk of a car. Okay, Karen Stark, what about it? No surprise, Nancy. This is his response to everything. Think about it. You do something wrong. You cross his path. And he is going to say, okay, you're ending up in this car. You're ending up shot. You're ending up something. Threatening people. And he gets away with it for years, along with abusing the women. Because he's so charming. Everybody thinks he's so wonderful. But not anymore. It's all catching up with him. And, of course, what a dink! The next morning, the Vibe office is trashed. Listen. The next morning, staffers find the Vibe office broken into and all of its servers stolen. The entire issue is gone. Editors immediately suspect Combs and his bad boy crew are behind the robbery. Luckily, an employee saved a copy to a personal drive and the magazine makes its delivery for print. Smith says at the time she did not realize the extent of the potential danger Combs posed, but now looks back on the incident unnerved. What a dink, right? And remember, according to the feds, Sean Puffy Combs, a.k.a. Diddy, is not a suspect in the murder of Tupac Shakur. We stop and remember an American hero, Corporal Muhammad Saeed of Melvindale Police, Michigan. Just 26, he is shot dead in the line of duty, survived by grieving parents and siblings. American hero, Corporal Mohammed Saeed. Thank you to all of our guests for being with us, but especially you and our MSM family for being with us tonight and every night. Nancy Gray signing off.